Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we'll be going over Kokomi and how to prepare for her with the best weapons and artifacts and the resources you will need to level her. There will be timestamps so you can skip to parts of the video which you need and if you are new here consider hitting the subscribe button to become a member of the community. First off, I will show all of Kokomi's essential materials on the screen. You're going to probably want to start preparing for her now and don't make the mistake that I did with Bao. To get her to level 80 in total, you are going to need about 108 Sango Pearls, which can only be found on what Tatsu in the island. For the rest of her materials, you are going to need to fight these new enemies and fight the Hydra Cube up to a total of 13 times for level 80. Now let's talk about Kokomi's talents, which I will show on screen for you now. To level it up, you are going to need a guide with trans science. I don't really know how to say that. This can be located here on your map. The level up costs for all phases will also be shown on screen for you too. I would say it would be worth to level up all of her talents as they all seem quite useful. I will go in depth with Kokomi when she is released as I think the damage and healing she does in her burst will be based off normal attack HP and healing bonus, thus needing you to raise her normal attack time. Next off, let's talk about Kokomi's weapons. In my eyes, there are about 4 weapons which shine above the rest. Number 1, have Everlasting Moon Glow, Kokomi's own weapon, which I don't really recommend pulling for unless you've got a lot of cash because we all know the hell of the weapon battle. This weapon does provide you a huge HP bonus though, which is quite useful. Second, we have Prototype Amber, which also gives you a HP bonus, and then followed by Skyward Atlas due to its high stats in general. Finally, we have Thrilling Tales of the Dragon, which also can be quite useful to buffing your other characters while switching off Kokomi. Now that we are done with the weapons, let's talk about artifacts. In general, you are going to want to be avoiding substats that have crit rate, crit damage, and defense. But when are we not avoiding defense? And for each category, I recommend a HP timepiece, a hydro damage bonus cup, or a HP percent cup and a healing bonus circuit. And for sets, I recommend to run for the most damage. You want four piece out of the depths because after you do your initial burst AOE damage, the damage then relies on normal attacks for the remaining 10 seconds, which is boosted by 30%. For a more healing based one, I would recommend two piece maidens and two piece tenacity due to the HP bonus and healing effectiveness. Finally, let's talk about constellations and which I do and don't recommend pulling for if you have the money to do so. So at C1, the end of your queue, you release a fish which does 30% of your HP as damage and also won't be boosted by the Heart of the Depth set. So maybe if you have C1, 2P's Tenacity and 2P's Heart of the Depths will be better for you. The next constellation will boost your damage if you have team members which have 50% or less HP. C3 increases your ult talent by 3. C4 increases your attack speed during your ult and increases energy recharge. C5 upgrades jellyfish level, you all love that jellyfish. And C6 gives you a hydro damage bonus for the first 4 seconds of our ult if you heal somebody with 80% HP or more. C6 is situational but can be good as long as the conditions are met, with C4 being interesting too. I think the most damage increase you are going to feel however is in C1 and if you want to maximize your healing then going up to C2 would also be preferred. Well we are here at the end of the video and that's all you will need to prepare for Kokomi and I hope that you enjoyed. If you made it this far thank you and you might as well subscribe to join the community too. See you in the next video and good luck pulling for Kokomi.